Good morning to all of you. Welcome back to Namaste Village. Good morning. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning. We are here. Indeed, we are here. Present, accounted for. And I would love to begin this morning just with a few of the words that we shared yesterday from the song that I shared. And we'll treat this as a little beginning meditation or prayer. So I'll invite you to take a deep breath and to realize we are here, but to open our hearts and love no matter what, to keep our hearts open, even when it seems most difficult, most challenged, when we're most afraid. Because when we open in that way, we are able finally to see, to know, and to love. My eyes are open. At last I see you. My mind has opened. Finally I know you. My heart is open. At last I love you. To see if you can touch that space of open hearted love now. It's like jumping into an ocean and feeling yourself dissolve as if you're dissolving into the water, the salt, the whole ocean becomes your experience. And just swim there today and dissolve. So once again, welcome to our Wednesday session here at Namaste Village. It's so good to see all of you. And this morning, we're going to be doing something a little different. Instead of me starting off and getting things headed in, in a certain direction, we're going to have Vicky do that. And it's, it's different because uh, there's no preparation, there's no... No, I have no way of knowing anything that she's going to share. And I love that because then we come from that open space of love, of the heart, of whole mindedness. So Vicki, I'm going to turn it over to you and let you start us off and we'll just see where it takes us. Good morning. Okay. Good morning, everybody. And just as you were closing the Zoom mic, the Carolyn and um, some of the others were talking about International Peace Day. So I just want to say that to everyone that traditionally they've taken today, September 21st, as International Peace Day. And also at noon, wherever we are in the world, there's a request for silence, for just becoming quiet and opening to what peace is and to the truth of what we are. So I want to invite everyone to consider doing that at noon and hopefully in every time zone, it makes a wave of peace. Mm -hmm. And that was started years ago, I think at the United Nations. But I want to say that's particularly appropriate for today because um, I'm your opening act today, James. So <laughs> I'm going to pick up where you have been leading us because Joel Goldsmith his In the Infinite Ways, the only book he wrote specifically, gave the directions for living in Christ consciousness. He gave us directions for what Christ, what we call, let's say in the course, Christ vision. He calls it spiritual consciousness. He calls it fourth, um, fourth degree consciousness. Anyway, it's all, whatever words he or anyone uses, it's the same experience. That's why in any tradition, new or old, traditional or non-traditional, the experience of truth is always going to be universal and the same. And there's no lack of agreement on the experience, although there may be many interpretations 
and arguments about what it means and how to do this or that. One of Joel's primary foundational cornerstones is in what um, he writes in chapter four, and I'm picking that up because James left us yesterday right around there, to recognize the nature of God, to recognize that God is. That's essentially, and I'm gonna read you a couple of sentences, just a couple of sentences from that chapter, chapter four, in case you have the book, of God is, because when, when everything proceeds from its foundation, everything. If we have a foundation thought that is not true or has a mistake in it, everything else we build upon that thought is going to tumble and it's going to show up the crack or the mistake that we have in the foundation. If we have a foundational idea and we proceed from that that is true, then everything we do will come forth in that same truth and the same with us. In the, in the Course in Miracles, Jesus says the cornerstone of thought is that God created me, I am as God created. And in the ego's world, or the world of appearances that Joel also speaks of, we are separated from that source. So everything that proceeds from that has that crack, that, that idea built into it of separation and uh, limit in the idea that we are one with our creator and that God is, everything proceeds from that and is undertaken through grace, even our experience here in time and space. So what Joel is trying to get us to experience is the ever present moment of now, that right now God is. And his primary directives are short little words that I always love. Their primary directives are rest, let, and is. That as we rest, we let go of the defenses and the thinking in our minds that were based on thinking we were separate beings, separate from our creator. We rest those thoughts. That, would, that is what resting is. That's what true stillness is. It's not about the body and the physical sounds. It's about letting the clamor of who I am and how do I fix and solve and manage, let it be, rest those ideas, and let what is underneath come to the surface. Just like in the, this morning's little centering prayer that James just did, we center in on the isness and the love of God by resting our thinking mind resting all problem solving, resting what comes to our physical eyes is all the appearances. And we let the love of God arise in our awareness and then come through our awareness into our consciousness as an experience. Now, m most experiences will, the best word I know is love. I feel cared for, taken, taken, uh, cared for, loved, and that the, the, the natural expression of love is to give forth of itself to love. And Joel in this chapter is trying to take us right to that foundation of God is now, not later, that no matter the clamor of the outside, if we can take our awareness to that, to that experience of God is now, that we come into our own direct experience and we're not dependent on anyone else. He was very, he really worked hard at not letting his students of the day be dependent on him, but constantly was giving them like pointers and direction. And this is one of the primary ones. The foundational cornerstone of life is that God is. Now here's a couple of sentences from there. So you can hear the exact, his exact words. Let me see if I can find them. That's always a challenge for me. <laughs> okay. We must be arriving now at a state of consciousness called is. And we must, we must, let me see, rest in that is. 
we have no evil to oppose or from which to be protected. And we do not have to pray in order to get God to do something for us, since God, good, already is. If deep within us we can feel a responsive agreement, that is our prayer, that is our treatment, and that is our communion with God. You see how simple this is? This is the direction. Rest and let God be. Rest, defend not, think not. Rest. When we are faced with any situation and we don't know what to do, bravo. Thank you that I am aware that I don't know. It's as if there's two lines of time and space. One is God ising, and the other is the trans the overlay, the plastic overlay that we made up of ourselves is independent. And they don't cross, they run parallel. And the way that we access the God line the God experience is to drop. And what's dropping but stop? Drop and pray and rest. Rest. When we say, I don't know, and we rest our mind, we immediately open to what is, the reality that already is. -ing. We're not trying to maintain some ideas that time and space should look a certain way. When we rest, we drop our intention of being separate and we rest into our natural oneness with our Creator. So we, we literally drop into the reality of God that is omnipresent everywhere. And that's all we're asked to do. Then whatever we're here to do will be given to us through love. We will recognize what is ours to do. Then we live here in time, not judging and figuring, but beholding that same presence in each other. When we behold that presence in each other, we draw it forth not only in each other, but we stabilize it in ourselves. And that's what we do here every morning. We remember that we belong to God, that we are children of a loving, light-filled God that cherishes, blesses us, cares for us, that we, are, we can be like the lilies of the field. We don't have to toil and spin and work it out. There was nothing to work out except one foundational idea, and that's that we belong to God, and God is ising and being right now. We don't have to pray for some outcome. We don't have to make amends. We need to simply rest let God be in our experience. Let God come into our experience here and right now. Amen, Brother James. That's your setup. All I'm going to say is I need to let you start things off more often. <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you so much, Vicki. So simple and yet so clear. The isness of love, the isness of the divine in and through each one of us now, in this very moment, right now. You know, as you were writing or speaking, Vicki, um, a line came to me and I just wrote it down quickly. And it was, love is always maximal. Love is always maximal. And if it's not maximal, it's not love. If it's not everything, if it's not whole, you know, this is the, the experience that we, that we pull back from so unconsciously, the idea that love is always whole. We want a partial love. We feel more comfortable with a love that, that is uh, fleeting or conditional. But the idea that love could be whole right now, and I can rest in that. I just love your analogy of the transparency and just, just fall and rest. Don't try and figure it out. We spend so much time trying to figure out that which figured us out a long time ago. Just let it be. Rest in the certainty that love is maximal and that love is right now in us, through us, as us. It's all we need to do is just allow, allow the truth to be true. How, how could that be complicated? Allow the truth 
to be true. It is. So why not just allow that in my mind? Because it's true no matter what. But in my mind, I can make a decision to simply rest there and be present to that truth or deny it, go in another direction, the overlay. No, no, I have a better idea. We, but we've been using the analogy of that transparency machine that we used to all have in high school. Do you remember that? Back before they had PowerPoint and I can't even imagine going to school and having all of those tools now. I mean, we used to, and uh, what was it called? M mimeograph? Can you remember how that smelled? Oh yeah. Kids don't have that now. But the transparency machine, with, with nothing on it, it was pure, clear, but we lay something over it, a concept, something we think we need to learn, and this is what we do in perception. Just allow love to be whole right now. Rest there. This is not complicated. It doesn't take work. Just rest in God. I also love, Vicki, that that you talked about the ever-present moment of now. I mean, when, when you put these things in such a simple way, it's so clear, isn't it? The ever-present moment of now. Be there. That's where you are. So you may as well be there. You may as well rest there. Rest, let, is. I love it, Vicki. That's great. Anything else you'd like to share about that? Okay, I have another line that's good um, <laughs> that we can um, bounce off on. Let's see. Um, oh, you know, the, Joel was a dear brother. I mean, this is this is what we all are. We are really committed to helping one another. And he he says in here, I have but one wish for the students of the infinite way and all others on the path. And that is not that they accept my experience of what God is, but that each one may himself experience God, know God, feel God, love and understand God, and finally realize their own Godhood. And these are the little ways we do it. They, they're so understated. In other words, to rest, to let, to simply be, to let all things be. It's so, it seems like it's not enough because the ego mind is in such a state of scribbling on that transparency sheet and complicating things that we got used to complicating as being valuable. And it's hard for us to appreciate simplicity, but that's what we're doing. It's the same as Jesus said, we've got to be like a little child. Love's not complicated. Love just welcomes, like you said earlier, welcomes, allows, and then it dissolves the scribbles that we had written and we had used crayon to, to cover up the light that we are. And but we, we must do it ourselves. So we must rest today. And today is a wonderful day to start doing that all day long with this being International Peace Day and all, at 12 o'clock anyway, for sure, let's all do it. And rest as soon as there's a quandary or a question or a concern, instead of going down the road of problem solving, and I saw this for myself, don't just catch it and say, oops, I'm thinking again. Oh, I don't want to ever do that anymore. What, what, an, what, a, what an outgrown, what an outmoded way to live here. Never <laughs> get it. And I'll just do this, just drop, just drop and rest. And then the answer will come through. It will come through. It will because God knows our need before we know it. We keep thinking, oh, I have to tell God this and tell God that. Imagine thinking I, that's the old style, old world prayer. Oh, pray for my cancer, pray for this. There's no prayer. God already is and is giving everything that we could ever need or want. The only thing we need is to realize and drop into the love of God. So let's do it. And instead of looking at things and judging them, the other theme that Joel uses, we could do this another day, is that beholding everything. Catch the glimpse 
and the light and the love of God in everything. There's God in everything. There is no spot God is not. God is omniscient, omnipresent, omni everything. Catch the glimpse there, look for it. And that's how we drop into this direct experience of love. And we're not dependent on any book, any person, any anything. And we bring all our fears there, all our hurts there, regrets, everything. That's it. Thank you. Wow. I'm having to take notes because everything you're saying here is so darn good. Just drop, drop and rest. How simple is salvation? I, I just love the simplicity of this, Vicky. And I also like how in the ego mind, its defense is always, well, that's not enough. Just drop into love. That's not enough. There has to be more than that. And we, we talked about this, I think it was last week, where the ego will assert itself always, its vision, and will often say, you know, I've already heard that. When are they going to give us something that we haven't heard already? As if this is complicated, as if there's still stuff that we haven't heard or experienced, it's all there. And the analogy that I love that just popped in during the session was if you were madly in love with someone and they said to you today, I love you. And they said it tomorrow and the next day, would you say to them, you know, you told me that yesterday. <laughs> Isn't there something more? Can't you tell me something else? No, you wouldn't do that. Every time you hear that, your, your heart would open. And it's the same with this. Every time you hear the simplicity of this truth, your heart will open if you let it, if you allow. And that's why those three experiences of welcome, I allow, I dissolve, are so important. Dissolving is not the end, it's the beginning. Dissolving into love is the beginning, but we're so afraid as if losing our identity that something has been lost. Nothing is lost in love. So Vicki, I'm so grateful. Thank you. Let's do this more. Have you start off because it's, it was really hot. It was great. And I think we have a few minutes, so I'm going to turn to Calico now. Calico is up in her room and Calico is always good at adding the punto. The period so good morning dear one good morning everybody you know that was a great session thank you so much vicky um you know just really you know taking these words and applying them into whatever is going on from in me right now and one of the, <laughs> the little things that's going on is um I'm learning to love technology, okay? And how that looks initially is anything but love. <laughs> and so I have this phone that um, I think it's dying <laughs> and, and I don't want to accept it. And so I'm fighting in my mind. Do I buy another phone? Oh, do I want to, do I even want a phone? And, and the reality is there are things going on in my world that require me to have a phone. So this is what's filling my mind with many thoughts during the day. They'll just come out, mm, the phone. Yeah, what should I do about the phone? And, you know, I'm sitting here listening to this going, God, it's your decision. Whether I have a phone, don't have a phone, this phone dies, this phone lives, it doesn't matter. And that's where I can stay in a present state of peace. Because as soon as I think the phone, I move out of peace. I'm in this conflicted space of do I, don't I, is it, is it not? And it's like, and there are all these thoughts that floor, you know, just flurry around with that. And it's just keep coming back to God, it's all in your hands. And I'm just going to keep putting one foot in front of the other 
doing whatever it is that I do today, and somehow this will miraculously clear. And we were talking about this at breakfast, you know, you know, they called the book A Course in Miracles, you know, and that always seemed funny to me because I thought, miracles, hell, this is a lot of work. But the reality is, if you really do this, turn it over to God, let God, God is, so let God. And it's like, and as soon as those prayers become ever present, what happens is you forget about the phone. There are no phones to even think about, let alone worry about. And that's the miracle. It's like those thoughts that used to drive us crazy no longer because it's just been erased. You know, it's you know, when, when you say you've been healed, it's not like I think, you know, some problem has been taken care of. I managed some problem, therefore I'm healed. No, I don't have to do anything. And that's where the miracle is. I did nothing and the situation took care of itself. And now it no longer even occurs as a thought in my mind. Anyway. That's where my mind took me. And I thank you because, yeah, it cleared up all the technology thoughts that I had for today. And that is peace of mind. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Calico. So to close, I, I'm going to turn to Scott Grace and, and see, Scott, do, maybe you could make up a song that just uses the word, the words love is or God is, and, and just bring this home for us, because you're, you're so good at just letting the, the music spring forward. So I'm going to turn it over to you, and we'll see what Holy Spirit has to share musically. Okay. God is where problems have been solved. God is where I rest and dissolve. God is maximal expression, a past life regression. A deep, deep confession. God is everyone and everywhere and everything. And if you dare to open your heart wide, you know that God is in your Precious opportunity. Thank you for, for wow. calling on me. Precious indeed. My goodness. Isn't that amazing? As, as a musician, I respect that so much. Just the ability to just open up and not question. Just allow. That's the only way you could do something like that is if you just get out of the way and allow and dissolve. And then this beautiful light comes shining through. And that's the lesson for each one of us. This beautiful light comes shining through when we get out of the way. So as Vicky says, just drop, just rest. It's so simple. So we love you. We love you. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Have an amazing day, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Namaste, everybody. Thank you. Namaste. I love you. I love you. Thank you.